Hey everyone, welcome back. This is conditional seven for part three of module one. First question, are valid credentials? So given a name and a password, are valid credentials returns true if the name is longer than three characters and the password is at least eight characters long. Otherwise it returns false. So the name is longer. Okay, so we're gonna do two Boolean variables. One is going to be name is longer than three. So we'll say a variable name valid and for the name to be valid the name uh, has to have a length that is greater than three and we'll say password valid is when the password is at least eight characters long so we'll say password dot length is at least eight which means that it needs to be eight or above so we'll say greater than or equal to eight now we've got a nice if statement that we can build off of this. If name valid and password valid, we're gonna return true. Else we are going to return false. So check the name length, save that to a Boolean variable. Check the password length, save that to a Boolean variable. And if statement making sure that they are both correct, are both uh, true, and then we return true if they are, and false otherwise. And we're in good shape. Find min length of three words. Oh, this is a fun one. So what a lot of people run into is, uh, what do, how do I look at all three of them, and what do I, like how do I, how do I start this out? And so what I always do is I say a variable, um, well there's a couple ways to do this, but let's do it in a way that could apply to a min length of a large number of words. So we'll say array is equal to word one, word two, and word three. So now we have them in an array, so we could iterate over them. But instead, well, yeah, we should iterate. So let's say that variable min length is equal to, and a lot of people do a thing where they say they'll just start it at zero. We don't want to do that. Uh, theoretically, we could start it as, at infinity because uh, we want the min length to be something that is uh, unable to accidentally be interpreted as the minimum length. If we do zero, we're never going to find a length that's shorter than that. If we do infinity, we cannot fail to find a length that is shorter than infinity. But one way to kind of scoot around that, as it were, is just to set the min length equal to the length of the word of the first word. Then we're going to iterate over the array, but instead of starting at zero, we're going to start at one. So we'll say variable i is equal to one, i is less than the length of the array, i is going to increment by one each time. And here's where we're going to do some checking. We need to say if the length uh, of the current word is less than min length, reassign min length to be length of current word. Once we've done all of that, that for loop is going to take us through the other two words at which point min length will be the length of the shortest word, so we can return min length. How this is gonna work, if the length of the current word, so the current word is array at i dot length, if that's less than min length, then we know the current word is shorter than the length of the word that we got min length from. So if that's the case, we reassign min length to be equal to the length of the current word which is just this expression right here. So create an array, make the first word length the minimum length, because it could be, or else it'll be replaced once we find one shorter. Iterate over the rest of the words, which we now have in an array. If the current word length is less than the length, minimum length that we've already found, then reassign the min length to be the length of the current word. And finally, once we've done all of that, return the min length, the min length. Excellent. Return the max length. So this is going to be almost the exact same problem except one difference in our uh, in our if statement. So first, variable array is equal to an array of all the words, which we can actually just grab the parameter list. Um, hey, isn't there an ES6 and beyond feature that allows us to do what we've just done right here? Uh, yes, there is. And I wouldn't worry about it if I were you for now because being able to build those things using more basic syntax is a great way to ensure that you'll remember them once you learn them and also provide a fallback in case you forget how to use them. Say variable max length 
is equal to the length of the first word. And the other thing that a lot of people bring up is that why don't you just make the array these two? You could. Again, a lot, a lot of different ways to do all these. So I'm going to create a for loop. I is going to need to be less than the array length each time, I plus plus. Our conditional here is going to be almost the exact same idea as what we just did, but, you know, different because it's the max length. So if the length of the current word, which is array at I, dot length, if that's greater than max length, then we want to assign max length to be equal to the length of the current word. Once the for loop is gone, it'll have max length will be containing the length of the maximum length word. Wow, that's a really awkward way to say that, but max length will have the answer that we want. So we would return max length. So two very similar problems. We approached them in the same way. Uh, there are a ton of different ways to do these problems. Um, if the question is, hey, isn't there another way? Yes, yes, there is another way to do this. There's like 50. Um, but here's one way. So hopefully you enjoyed that. Thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you in the next one.